Hello, my darlings. Today I'm delivering another Tomura Shigaraki fanfiction. Tomura Shigaraki is one of the better characters in Boku no Hero. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, but before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike. And if you're new here and think I'm worth it, subscribe and hit the bell icon. This is the best way you can support me indirectly because this will improve my standing in the YouTube algorithm. The higher my standing in the YouTube algorithm, the more money I make. And uh, if you want to support me more directly, meaning you give your money directly to me, I have both, both a merch store and a Patreon. The Patreon being technically more cheap, so if you don't have a lot of cash, hey, throw a dollar at me. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, Lastly, this is a reread. Uh, reread means I already read the story, I already wrote the story, and uh, well, this one is multiple months old, and uh, I thought, hey, let's give it another shot. I really liked the story when I first wrote it, and uh, honestly, I've never read a fanfiction like that, and I thought it needed to be written. So I hope you enjoy it just as much as you did the first time. And one last thing before I dive right into it. This is the cute animal picture of the day. It is here to remind you to do what I just said. <laughs> like, comment, or dislike if you think I deserve it. Just anything really. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, let's get right into it. Honestly, the only reason you joined the League of Villains was sheer desperation and your love for bad boys. You didn't have a broken moral compass, nor did you have any desire to needlessly kill. Admittedly, you did have a problem with virtue signaling and hypocrisy, and an organization like the League flat out told you that their goal was power and control. You had interned in way too many hero agencies and were completely disillusioned with hero culture. Strangely enough, they had accepted you despite your lack of violent tendencies and overall uselessness in combat. Right now, you are napping in a hammock outside of the mobile base Kurogiri had set up. It was basically an oversized camping van set up at a small forest and next to an abandoned house. Most of the guys were set up inside the building but you and Toga had decided to stay in the van for privacy. The past few days have been particularly turbulent. Something about the League getting involved with the Yakuza, and judging by Shigaraki's excitement, it must have been the conclusion of a plan they, as per usual, didn't involve you with. After all, you were quirkless. The cracking of a stick shook you awake. With the sudden jolt of adrenaline making you fall out of your hammock. Ouch! You grumbled while crawling up on your feet. Kurogiri! Kurogiri! Next time, I want you to teleport us closer to the van. You heard Shigaraki's voice. My apologies, Tomura Shigaraki. But the risk of someone jumping after us last second before I can close the portal is far too great. Answered the shadowy man as three figures came into view. Mr. Compress, Kurogiri, and the titular leader of the League of Villains. Hey guys! You shouted while waving towards them. Did you do it? Uh, what? Ever it was? The three men approached you. The two of them, whose faces you could actually make out, looked surprisingly bright. Even the usually brooding Tomura had an uplifting smile on his face. The mission was great success, said Compress, while playing around with the blue marble. We need to celebrate, the man looked at Kurokiri. Why not fetch us some drinks? For all of us. The purple shape simply nodded. 
And the two men excuse themselves, leaving you alone with your boss. So, boss, what was all the secrecy about? At first, I just wanted to strengthen our numbers. But then... He paused and pulled out a small wooden box. This came into my position, but it's a surprise. First, Kurogiri needs to do some tinkering with it. He chuckled darkly. Well, I'm happy you guys are okay. You gave him an optimistic smile. And his cheeks tinted pink ever so slightly. Uh, we... We should probably go to the others. <laughs> I, I, I'm not missing out on those cocktails. You stuttered. Whenever you made Shigaraki blush, you just simply had to blush too. The celebration of a well-fought victory went deep into the night. Everyone was either wasted or in the process of becoming wasted. You and Shigaraki seemed to be the only sober ones left. Once the clock at midnight. Suddenly, however, the drunken fun was interrupted by Spinner who demanded everyone calm down for just one minute. Despite not being part of this wonderful operation, he began, I just want to say to each and every one of you, Kenji would have been proud of all of us. Darby raised his shot glass in approval. Let's... Let's have a toast. And a moment of silence. Spinner said in a somber tone. The lizard man grabbed a full bottle of whiskey from a table that stood in the middle of the rundown living room and slowly began to spill its contents on the ground. Once the bottle was half empty, Spinner simply shrugged and axed the rest in a singular large gulp. Then the party continued. Now with a somewhat mellow tone, if it weren't for Toga endlessly flirting with both Twice and Darby. Both men having a really difficult time declining her due to their drunken states. You looked at Shigaraki, who was sunken in one of the seats, staring at his half-empty glass of orange juice. Boss, you looked sad. Wasn't the mission successful? The grey-haired man shook his head and jumped up. <laughs> Listen, why don't we take a walk for a moment? He asked you quiet enough so no one but you heard him. After a quick nod, you followed him outside. The house you were all crashing in had a backyard. Despite being completely overgrown, it still had a properly working yet rusted bench. And a working fountain that was covered in moss. Tomura sat down and petted the spot next to you. Tomura sat down and patted the spot next to him. This mission was very important. After I realized what the Hisaikai had in their possession. For a moment he looked at you before he returned to look at the ground. They had this girl in custody. And I don't know how, but apparently her blood can disable quirks. Your eyes widened, but you let him continue. So I thought to myself, what would be the best use for a weapon like that? His features hardened, and with a head tilt he pointed towards his hands. All five fingers were touching the rusty old bench. Yet it wasn't decaying any further. You gasped. T 
Umara, did... Did you delete your quirk? No. Not really. I simply took one of these. He pulled out a blue vial. They have roughly half the dose that's required to completely disable the quirk long term. He grinned. They made a handful of them for me after I requested it. You raised an eyebrow. But why would you use it on yourself? I, I mean, you could probably use it very well to put Dabby in his place when he starts talking smack about you. You suppressed a chuckle. Laughing would probably look disrespectful right now. You suppressed a chuckle. Laughing would probably look disrespectful right now and ruin the mood. Do you remember when we took you in? A quirkless, completely useless civilian. Being called useless stung a bit, but he was right. Yeah. I had been evicted because all I ever got were internships. And no real job. So they kicked me out. You looked up into the sky. I had been running around all day, trying to find something. Anything that could help me. And... You became teary-eyed and couldn't finish the sentence. So Shigaraki finished the story for you. And you fell asleep in the alley next to our old base. He paused. But... Do you want to know why we didn't kill you and turned your body into ash? With a gob you realized that this had been an option. And you never even asked that question yourself. With a gob you had realized that you never even asked that question yourself. You had just accepted your new life. Because anything was better than being out alone in the cold. No. Was your reply. And he gave a small, yet hearty laugh. <laughs> well, I felt something. Pity. The first time I ever felt something like that for a person that isn't me. You returned to look at him. Wait. Was he opening up to you? Right. He took the quirk blocking blood. I... He started. I came to appreciate you. And every second we spent together. Was this a confession? And I have been wondering... If maybe... He fell silent. The blush returning to his cheeks. And his lower lip began to twitch. It was obvious that on his own, he would never be able to finish the question. Taking initiative, he took his calloused hand in yours. Feeling only a slight hint of fear. When your fingers touched each other for the first time. What were you wondering? Came your question after your eyes met. And his face became soft. Do you want to become my girlfriend? Hearing Shigaraki say these words to you. It felt like the night had turned to day. And you felt a rainbow of emotions take hold of your heart. And you embraced his slender frame. Arms wrapping around your waist. His hands rubbing greedy circles into your back. I don't... 
I don't know what to say. You heard him sob into your ear. I'm just so happy. I finally... Finally get to touch something with my entire hand again. I'm just so happy. I finally... Finally get to touch something with my entire hand again. Without the fear of breaking something. The only reply was tightening your embrace. Feeling his bony figure breathe under you. You remained like this for about six minutes. Until you could finally speak again. This effect will only be temporary. About two hours. Uh, with this stupid party, we already wasted 80 minutes. You chuckled into his ear and pulled out your throwaway phone. <laughs> then I set an alarm for 39 minutes. He whimpered. Uh, th thank you.